is Larry Stoll from Pace Turf, and today I want to talk about a quick study that was done uh, in cooperation with the uh, Reed Yenny at Hillcrest Country Club. And what we did was look at the TDR 300 uh, soil moisture meter from Spectrum Technologies handheld meter that has probes that are inserted into the soil. Uh, it has a handle on the top uh, with the readings, in addition to the Toro Turf Guard in ground sensors. Now, the difference between the two sensors is, uh, is fairly distinct. The uh, TDR 300 is inserted into the soil through the grass and thatch layer into the soil and it's, it has to go through several layers of uh, organic matter on the top, then maybe layers of uh, higher sand content, depending on, on a green or a fairway, depending on where you have it. There will be a, a heterogeneous material where these sensors read from. And the sensors will read in this area of the soil around, around the probes. So you're talking about uh, sticking through a, a heterogeneous layer of materials where it has to take the readings. With the turf guard sensor, because it is inserted horizontally, it's going to take meter readings around the array of uh, sensors at, uh, at what, what level you put it at the top. We place them at uh, two inches down from the top, and then there's uh, another probe down uh, about four and a half inches below that at 6.5 inches. So we're going to take a look at the comparison between the uh, TDR 300 readings and the um, turf guard sensor readings at the two inch and the, and the six and a half inch depths to see how they compare. So in this quick study, we looked at the three inch probes, the 4.8 inch probes from uh, Spectrum, and also the eight inch uh, inch probe. Just to give you a look at the length of the probes, this is what a three inch probe would look like a 4.5 inch probe and an 8 inch probe. So that gives you a, a rough idea of the depth of the sensors you're going to be looking at and right off the bat you would think that well maybe these two meters are not going to correlate very well with their soil moisture readings because the depth of the probes are not exactly the same. The 3 inch probe will be measuring from the surface down to 3 inches as opposed to a 2 inch probe that's measuring at the 2 inch depth and averaging it out along that profile at the 2 inch depth. Similarly, at the six and a half inch depth or uh, 4.8 inch depth, we can't even get a uh, probe that's the right uh, depth to match with those. But in one case, you're going to be averaging out the soil moisture over the whole length of the probe as opposed to uh, measuring it horizontally at the six and a half inch depth. Both of these meters, the Spectrum Technologies TDR 300 and the Turf Guard meters, use what's called time domain reflectometry as the method of sensing soil moisture. So there really isn't anything different uh, about the way they sense moisture, but what's different about these two meters is the way they're located and how you use them. The TDR 300 is particularly useful for spatial measurements. Uh, so you can take the meter around and move it to different locations to get a time point reading for uh, the distribution of soil moisture throughout the area. The turf guard sensor, on the other hand, is stationary. It will give you a temporal or over time reading for soil moisture as it changes through the day and through the seasons through the year. To illustrate the use of the TDR 300 to, for spatial analysis, we can see there's a difference in turf quality in this Poa annua green in July of 2008. We took the TDR 300 and probed the various levels of turf performance from the very damaged to the high quality turf and recorded the volumetric water content that the TDR 300 provided. This will allow us to determine if soil moisture might be interacting with the turf quality. So in this case, on the bottom x-axis, we see the soil volumetric water content as measured by the TDR 300, and in the y-axis, we see turf grass quality. There's a distinct relationship between turf quality and soil moisture content, as we detected it by moving the moisture meter between areas of good and poor quality turf. This gives us a good indication that there is something going on with the irrigation distribution that resulted in the damage that we saw that is due to drought stress. It also lets us know that we're looking at soil moisture levels above 18% to provide the highest quality turf performance. The turf guard system, on the other hand, is stationary, so it's only monitoring soil moisture in one location, but it's measuring it over time to give us a temporal look at soil moisture changes uh, over time. 
In this graph, we can see several peaks which are related to irrigation events and a large peak toward the end between uh, May 10th and 11th that was a leaching event for salt management. But this just gives us a, a, a quick idea on how you can monitor uh, soil moisture over time and see when the best time is to irrigate. So let's take a look at how the trial was run. Uh, Reed Yenny is uh, putting on the three inch probes and we located the uh, turf guard sensors on three greens. Each green had a turf guard sensor in the front, middle, and the rear of the green. And at each one of the sites where the turf guard sensor was located, we took measurements using the three inch probe, such as here at 55.7% uh, volumetric water content. Uh, swapped probes out, it reads very fast on uh, putting in uh, uh, the additional probes. And after you swap the probes out, you have to uh, readjust the meter for the new probe lengths. So we set it up to the 4.8 inch probes. Uh, you stick the meter directly into the previous holes uh, that we ran for the three inch. So we're gonna just go down a little bit deeper, take a reading at the uh, 4.8 uh, inch depth, which uh, comes out to be 41.6. So it's uh, deeper into the profile. Uh, there's less uh, soil moisture and then uh, swapping out to the uh, 7.9 or eight, actually 8 inch uh, probes uh, will uh, get the reading for the average of that entire depth from the surface all the way down to, uh, to 8 inches. Once we get the 8 inch uh, depth uh, using the same exact same location uh, we have a good reading for uh, this spot and this is the Lowest spot in the golf course, I think, pretty close. This is the front part of uh, green number eight, which is down in a, a bit of a hole. This chart summarizes the data that was collected. Each bar represents the average of three readings for a particular site or sensor. The horizontal x-axis lists the sensor type and depth where the reading was taken. TG represents turf guard sensor readings at the either the two or the 6.5 inch depth. The suffix BR and AR represent before rainfall or after rainfall. Just prior to the testing the TDR 300, Hillcrest Country Club received almost one inch of rainfall. The prefix TDR represents the data collected using the Spectrum Technologies TDR meter and the suffix 3, 4.8, or 8 correspond to the lengths of the probes that were used. The vertical y-axis reports volumetric water content. The blue bars represent the results collected from the turf guard sensor locations that were near the front low area of each of the three greens that were tested. The orange bars represent the turf guard sensor locations that were in the middle of the greens, and the green bar represent the sensor locations that were located in the rear, usually the highest portion of the green. Note the consistently higher soil moisture content at the low fronts of the greens. The middle and back portions of the greens were fairly consistent. As expected, the TDR 300 meter reported higher moisture content compared to the turf guard sensors. The most likely explanation is that the meters are not measuring the moisture content in the same type of soil or same location. There was a weak correlation between the turf guard sensor readings after rainfall and the TDR 300 using the 8 inch probes and the 6.5 inch measurements on the turf guard sensor. There were no significant correlations between any of the other measurements. These results suggest that the turf guard sensor readings and the TDR 300 meter volumetric water content measurements should not be expected to be the same. The trends, however, for higher moisture content in the fronts of greens and lower moisture in the middle and back of greens indicates that both meters can be useful in evaluating turf grass soil moisture content, but that the turf guard and the TDR 300 meters are different tools and they have slightly different applications in turf grass management. One of the observations that uh, many of you have made and that uh, we noticed in this study also was that the fronts of greens tended to be a little bit wetter. And there's been uh, some work done at Michigan State University not too long ago with a bunch of great researchers including Paul Rieke, Calhoun, uh, Frank, Nikolai, Lenauer, Cal a bunch of, bunch of people there did a great uh, bunch of research and they were looking at uh, constructing of USGA spec greens in just a slightly different fashion. In a USG spec green, uh, this represents the surface of the turf. The, the cavity that is uh, cut out for the green is adjusted so that the surface of the green will always be uh, 12 inches uh, from the bottom of the profile. So you'd have a 12 inch root zone 
mix that you'd be working with. And that may vary from uh, site to site, depending on the soil conditions of the sands that you're using to construct the green. For example, at uh, Hillcrest Country Club, they used a 14-inch uh, sand depth of sand to get the right moisture holding capacity up at the top. Well, they did some work uh, looking at uh, changing the way the greens drain because the, the greens tend to slope forward so that you can see them when you're, you're uh, hitting onto the greens. So that would mean that the front part of the green is always below the top part of the green. Water would tend to, to roll forward. Even though you have good drainage in the system, more water might accumulate toward the front. Well, they ran a study where they uh, put the high end of the green, the back part of the green, as in the, in the work that we were just looking at with reeds, uh, site, only making the, uh, the depth 8 inches deep, and then at the front of the green, making the depth go up to 16 inches deep so that you would have more suction toward the front of the green where water would tend to accumulate. They found some uh, interesting results. The results they got at Michigan State indicated that the high areas of the green might drop down to as low as 7% volumetric water content after a three day dry down period, while the low end of that same area could be as high as 18%, sort of on the average. So the water does seem to flow down and maybe uh, accumulate so you have too much water at the low end uh, not quite enough at the high end. Uh, with the alternative design where you have an 8 inch root zone so there's not as much suction draining the surface of that, of that area, uh, they maintained 11% biometric water content at the high end after a three day dry down and at the bottom end they also had about 11, 11 to 12 percent of biometric water content which is a little, looks like it'd be a little bit easier to manage. Now the details of how you might construct a green to sort of adjust for all the different types of undulations would be pretty difficult, but it suggests that it may be a good idea uh, to construct screens a little bit uh, deeper in the front so you get a little bit more suction toward the front of the greens in addition to putting those smile drains in, uh, which most people put in uh, nowadays with, uh, with USGA spec greens. But it looks like that might be a good way to go in the future uh, to prevent water, excessive water holding toward the front of greens.